morning. This is KOAM in the morning, and welcome back after a three-day weekend. You can all thank all of our American presidents for that relaxing break. Yeah, good idea. Thank you, George. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, both Jameses. And uh, thank you. What are you doing? Well, I'm thanking all the presidents. In order, of course. Coco, there are 43 presidents. This is a short morning show. All right. You know, still, I think it would have been kind of nice. Sorry, Abe. Sorry, Calvin. Sorry, Theodore. Sorry, Franklin. <clears throat> Tomorrow is the fifth grade choral concert. We will be having a morning assembly at 9.30. The students will also be presenting an evening show at 7 p.m. And it's midterm time, so do your homework and raise your hand. And write your neatest cursive. What do we have to look forward in, in the cap? For more on that, we head to Danielle Haley. Today, Coco and Jessica, entree A is the ham and cheese sandwich on a bun. Entree B is the tacos with topping. The featured fruit and veggie include the sweet peas and apple slices. Top it all off with a delicious brownie. <laughs> What's going on in the Olympics? We go to Michael Kamaiba. First, let's talk about the medal count. Germany now leads with 18 medals. Norway is close behind with 17. Austria and the United States are tied at 15. One of those 15 came with a silver medal in ice dancing. It has been 30 years since a medal was won by the Americans in this part of figure skating. So it was a terrific win by Tennis Belbin and Ben Augusto. As you might know, Tennis just got her emergency American citizenship on New Year's Eve. Now, she feels that she was paid the United States back for believing in her and her partner. The U.S. women's hockey team took bronze. However, skier Bodie Miller who was expected to win up to four medals, again was disappointed. This is the second week of the Olympics, and there is still lots of action. I'd like to do that curling thing. You mean where the athletes use huge granite stones that they slide on the ice? Yeah, that it started in Scotland, you know, with river stones. You don't say! Actually, I do say. Today, it is probably most popular in Canada. It became an Olympic sport in 1998. <coughs> and the word has it that Miss Palmieri had her own curling competition last week. Well, that I believe! Now, John has some exciting news about Ooh. our own Jerome Bettis. Oh, yeah, my boss! That's right. It seems that Jerome Bettis has been hired by NBC to do a studio host on Sunday Night Football Show, Football Night in America. He will be appearing with Bob Costas. The buzz in his announcement of his new job said, when the regular season kicks off in Pittsburgh in September, it will be the proudest night of my life. I will finally get my ring and I will start my new career in front of all Steeler fans. Meanwhile, how is the... How is this for a great attitude? Even though Pirate Craig Wilson was not given a, st a starting lineup position, he's still he's still hustling. He showed up for spring training earlier anyway, and decided to even dust off his catching equipment so that a pressure the dust off so that he might be able to help out there too. One thing is for certain: ma manager Jim Tr Tracy was impressed. Craig says that he plans to make it hard for Tracy not to put him on a starting lineup. That's what's for today. Whoa! I like that Craig Wilson's got the approach. Now there's a winner any way you look at it. Now I think it's time we checked in with Miss Samantha Fisher. Oh, yes, and I do hope she has a little bit of sun for us. What about it? The ever-charming Miss Fisher. 
I hope that you're being sincere, Coco. Uh, of course. And just for that, I'm going to give you some sunny weather. <laughs> the high today will be 38, but there will be periods of sunshine. The low later tonight will be 28. And Coco, more good news, that there will be more sunshine throughout the week. See what being nice can get you? Oh, I do, I do, I do! Detention teachers today are Mrs. Busick and Mrs. Lazare. <laughs> and that was weather from our ever-vigilant meteorologist, Samantha Fisher. And this is an advance happy birthday to Taylor Nagy and Elizabeth Iorio in the third grade, as well as our own ace cameraman, Brad Templeton. Their birthdays are tomorrow, and Taylor and Elizabeth are going to be nine, and Mr. Templeton is going to be a ripe old 11. Yep, happy birthday and multiple happy returns. Now, do we have our teachers here with us today out there in Cameraland? Yeah, here they are. Mrs. D's here. Mrs. So. D's here. Is Mr. Tepercer here yet? Nope. I guess you get a point right away. I win by forfeit. Yeah, you think? Absolutely. Mr. T, we're waiting for you. Mr. T, you're going to lose. Yeah, all right. Well, let me in. Uh, oh, here he I is. Still, I still got a point. Should I move over? Move over, lady. I'm moving over closer to Coco. Right. How's it going, Coco? Oh, I'm fine. Now, Hi, to Coco. finish out today's episode, we're going to be playing <coughs> Girls versus Guys. Yes, we are. And Check. we have with us Mrs. D. Martino from the fifth grade. Wait, Mrs. D. All right, and <laughs> Mr. DeBerzer, Mrs. Paul Mary's student teacher in third grade. Now, as you may recall, Mrs. D. Martino was outraged when her home loan lost to Mrs. Paul Mary's when Mr. Shevchak posed his ice cream question about the playoff game. I'm trying not to make faces, Coco. I'm All right. Now, Mrs. <laughs> Martino protested that Mr. T had far too much sports knowledge at his disposal. Absolutely. And therefore, what better way to kick off <laughs> girls versus guys than to have on these two worthy opponents? Now, here's how it works. Each contestant will get three questions. Only there's a hitch. The girl gets the guy question, and you get that the guy gets the girl question. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Yep, and winners get bragging rights, and I might even throw in some gummy worms. What about ice cream for Mr. Shevchuk? Oh, okay, if well, we we'll win. try. We'll I try. My class one. All right. <laughs> question number one, Mrs. D. Now, do you okay. see you have your A, B, and C cards there? I do, okay. okay. You get the pretty ones since you're answering girl questions. Okay. All right. Yes, you ready? Nice. I'm pretty. ready. Okay. That's a focus. In baseball. <laughs> <laughs> in baseball. What is any pitching motion that breaks the rules called? What is it called? Especially when those runners are on base. Now it's multiple choice. Thank goodness for you. Oh, Mr. thank Green. goodness. Oh, thank goodness. Is okay. A, a cutter. Okay. B, a meatball. <laughs> C, a Baltimore chop. Or D, a ball. Okay. A cutter. Cutter. B a meatball. I don't think C, it's a meatball. A Baltimore chop. I don't think it's a Baltimore chop. Or D chalk. a bulk. And these are or all real baseball okay. terms. I'm not making these up. I don't know. I'm gonna go with. Okay. <laughs> what going, letter is it? I'm gonna go with D. D a bulk. It's correct. <laughs> Boy, good job, good job. That's all right. Okay. Mr. T, you're it's, under some pressure here. I have a feeling there's a home crowd advantage working here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I don't see my students out here. Yeah, but I well, hear, yeah. I do see a lot of students though. Hey, Mrs. Paul Mary, if you want to send down a few third graders, feel free. No. All right. 
What can I say? My kids are running the TV. Okay, here's another reason. Mr. T, which is not, which is not one of the American girl dolls? <laughs> An American Eddie? Idol? American girl. All okay. right, here we go. Is it A, <laughs> Samantha, B, Felicity, <laughs> C, Susanna, or D, Kit? A, Samantha, a B, Felicity, C, Susanna, or D, Kit. What do you think? Um, let's see here. I have some help. I have a couple of students. Well, no, I don't think they didn't hear the question. Okay, well, the... all right. Well, since I have no clue what the American <laughs> girls are, I'll go with A. A, Samantha. Hey, guess what, Mr. D? Okay, I'm ready. Are you getting any help out there? No, I'm not looking at them. Not. Especially, I'm not looking at Oleg. Okay. <laughs> For Mrs. D, the practice of using a rod, line, and hooks to catch fish is called A, angling, B, trolling, C, kiting, or D, dredging. Okay, I think I know this one. All right, what do you think? A. A, angling? You sure about that? Is I, that your final yes, answer? Yes, I, that's, I am, final answer, I am sure. Well, she's I correct. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to dance, right. you won the first that's one. That's all right, okay. Mr. T, I know you're gonna get this one. Thanks, Coco. Okay, what makes lipstick Shimmery! I bet you play that a lot. Pass. I love you, Coco. What makes lipstick shimmery? All right, is it A? Shh. Shh. Is it A? Mica. B? Fish scales. C? Iron oxide. Or D? Very small amounts of gold. Hmm. Do we have any guesses? A mica. I think you can help them. C iron oxide or D small amounts of gold. Okay, Coco. I think we're gonna get back in this game right about now. It's time that uh, we move on here to make this a close competition. I'm going with B. Second most. Okay. Second. A. NASCAR. B. NFL football. C. Pro wrestling. <laughs> or D. Baseball. You know that's hard. Wow. Well, I know NASCAR's NASCAR's pretty popular. Do you really know? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> You didn't help me out too much on the first question. <laughs> no, I didn't. Forget now. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, we need an answer. We don't okay. have all day. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to go. I'm going with football as second popular. All right. Because I, from what I'm hearing, I'm thinking that NASCAR is pretty, they're exceeding a lot of sports, I'm thinking. All right, I'm hearing no's. I'm still well, going with B. I already gave it. That's my final answer. All right, NFL football, and the answer is NASCAR. I should have went with NASCAR. Whoa. That was the most second. Whoa. I thought maybe that was first now. All right, Mr. <laughs> T. Mm. How many, wait, what's the score? Two to one. Two to one. Two. He can tie it up. Oh. Two to one. And if he ties it up, I don't know, you might have to make a return engagement here. All right, here it goes. Which score? No. I just got one wrong. Shh. Which store is not in South Hills Village? Oh, A. I know, I know. 
it's limited to <laughs> B, wet seal, C, Sam Goody, or D, Claire's. Oh, every self-respecting girl shopper would know this. You, you know what, Coco, we have a birthday girl in our class today, and Lizzie Oreo, and I think I might need some help from her. Come on over here, Lizzie. You got an idea? You think it's B? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go with B then. B right. wet seal? B. Final answer. Well, wet seal is in fact the store. The answer was Sam Goody. Chuck, I'm sure, will be coming to my class, maybe, and maybe he'll be offering ice cream. Maybe he will. <laughs> right, Mr. Chef Chuck? Maybe when cows fly, who oh, knows? I'm sad. All right, well. well thank you, Coco. Hey, it's a yeah. good job. Hey, thanks, Laura, you too. You want to help me out? Sure. Okay, here we go. Ready? You ready? We're ready. Good. Morning. Morning. Good. Learning. Learning. And go Steelers and Pirates! Good morning, Dorman Elementary, from the KOAM studio. It's Wednesday, February 22nd, and this is Jessica Turner and Coco the Crow here with your news. Let's begin. Happy birthday, Brett Templeton, and today it's for real. And also, happy birthday to Morgan Harry. She's also 11 today. It's Homestyle Meals every Wednesday. Today's main homestyle meal is selection is the sweet and sour chicken. Chicks! Hard to understand how a chicken can be sweet when it's been clobbered and thrown into a pot. Anyways, as I was saying, the second entree is the steak and cheese hoagie. With both meals, there is steamed rice, broccoli cuts, and mixed fruit. Go ahead, just say it. <laughs> Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And that's the menu for today. The choral concert, as we presented by the fifth graders, will take place this morning. I would also like to announce that Mr. Shevchuk sprang for ice cream in Mrs. Martino's class. He did, however, complain to Coco about the lipstick question. <laughs> Stay tuned tomorrow for Coco's question. It, w it could be your question posed to our res resident bird. Yes, it could. And if you have a question, be sure to place it in the envelope downstairs by the office, and it will be answered by moi. Now it's time to hear from Michael Pamabo, who will report on some neighborhood pets. Ooh, pets? Who that, could that be? Who knows? That's for sure, Jessica, at least in many people's opinions. Here in our area, people can get pretty irritated when deer eat their shrubbery or flowers. House owners also deal with raccoons and groundhogs. However, in the suburbs of California, people have a big have bigger concerns, mountain lions. Also called cougars or pumas, mountain lions live in 12 western states, including California. As people's neighborhoods have reached further and further into the country, there's more contact with wildlife such as deer, coyotes, bears, and even these lions. California is the only state that doesn't allow people to hunt or kill the lions. This is causing disagreement among many people. Some people want to be able to defend themselves uh, themselves against this against the big cats, while others say that humans need to learn to live with them. Some people have been injured and even killed by the mountain lions, so there is, so there is likely to be further discussion of this issue. I'm Michael from my book, KOAM News. Thanks for the report, Michael. I guess we have it easier in Pennsylvania. The Olympics are into the second week. 
John Morton is going to tell us how yesterday's medal count ended up, as well as some individual athletes did. The United States has moved into second place. Yeah, go Team USA! Tied with Norway. Jamie Coco. In first place is the German Olympic team with 21 medals. Meanwhile, the United States and Norway both have 18 medals. In speed skating, sorry, both Chad Hedrick and Shawnee Davis of the United States claimed medals. Hedrick earned a bronze and Davis snagged a silver. Other good news was that the U.S. women's bobsledding team was able to bring home the bronze. Figure skating started yesterday. So far, the American women, women are skating well, which is good because it is an area of figure skating where the wom women, women! Ha women have done very well over the past few decades. Our best hope for the medal, a medal has been Sha Sasha Cohen. That's Olympic report. don't know if the Olympic Committee would want to hear you singing that song. I think they'd be blown away by it. Uh-huh. Speaking of being blown away, that brings up weather. And that means Sam Fisher is ready to tell us what's ahead. Thanks, Jamie. Today's high will be well over freezing. At 43 degrees, the low will be right at freezing. Unfortunately, the clouds will have moved in, so there will be little sun. Yeah, Tonight. just as I suspected. You get our hopes up yesterday, then you dash them. You're cold, cold hearted, Miss Fisher. I'm going to try to ignore that as hard as it is. Detention teachers today are Mr. Perpetua and Mrs. Cortez. And by the way, the weather forecast in Torino, Italy, is identical to ours today, with the high of 43 and low of 32. Go figure! Yep, you've even jinxed them, Miss Fisher. Pretty amazing. Now today with us are some second grade sensational readers and math students from Miss Peterson's room, and we're thrilled to have them. And Miss Peterson has some great certificates here for them, and we've got a few little extras too. So let's get started. And I say first, let's get started with Rocket Math. And we have two students here who have passed their addition section of Rocket Math. And we have a Coco Magnet for them and Miss Peterson's certificate. So first off, let's have Abigail Katz. Come on up, Abigail. Here's your certificate. Thank you, Kofi. And there's your magnet. Now you'll put that on your locker, won't you? Yes. Oh, great job. Thanks for being here with us today, Abigail. Wave to Miss Peterson out there. Bye, Kofi. Bye. All right, and next up we have Amy Adams. Amy, come right in front of the table here because I want you to wave to the audience. Hi, Miss Peterson. Yeah! Thank 
okay. You're welcome. All right, and now we have. Oh, look, she's back again, Alma Bartnick. Did we just see you? Yes. Wow, you must be good at reading and math. Here you go. And here's your pencil. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. And now we have Timmy Ali. Timmy, come on out. Oh, he's going to come over here. That's fine. Go, have a seat. Have a seat right there. Here's your stuff. So how are you doing today, Timmy? Good. You're with all these girls, huh? Must be rough, huh? Is it rough with all those girls? Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Well, have a seat then. We don't want you to have to sit with all those girls. It might just be too tough on you. All right, and, and lastly, we have, oh, we have, oh, let's see, it's Amy Adams. Hi, Coco. Hi, haven't you been here, little girl? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, hang on. There you go. Thank you, Coco. You're welcome. Now, let's have all the second graders. Did I miss anybody? No. I got everybody good. Okay. Because if I forgot somebody, I was going to blame it on Miss Rinaldi. Ha! Okay, come on out, everybody. All the girls, line it up. You can stay right there, Timmy. We all ready? Yeah. We're going to say good morning, good learning, and good music. Can you remember all that? Yeah. All right, because the choral concert's today, so we got to be ready. Good morning, good learning, and, and what did I say? Good music. Oh, yeah, good music. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Good morning, and good learning, and good... Mr. Turner, I'm here with Coco the Crow, and here is your news. Yep. Yesterday, Mrs. McPherson wowed us again with her Splendiferous concert. And the star performers, that would be you fifth graders, were awesome. Clad in their very cool gray t-shirts and a variety of caps, you know, they look like they could have been American Idol contestants. And I think even Simon Cow would have liked their awesome performance. It was a job well done from start to finish. Thanks for both the very entertaining morning and evening, grade five and Mrs. McPherson. Oh, and that harmonica player, he was spectacular for sure. That was Cotton Kelly. Oh, well, it was terrific. Do you want to take care of Coco's question now? Sure, why not? Today's question comes from Devin Crepley in third grade, and Devin wrote, Dear Coco, do you have any brothers or sisters, and what are their names? Well, Devin, thanks for asking about them. Actually, I have one brother and one sister. My sister's name is Petunia, and she lives down in Virginia. And I also have a brother by the name of Dexter. Dexter lives in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And they're great siblings, but, you know, I don't get to see them quite as much now, now that I am a big-time news anchor. Yep. Thanks for the great question, Devin. Now, we'll be sending you some delicious gummy words for your effort. If you have a question, be sure to place it in the envelope by the office door. We fish them out on a regular basis, and yours could be next. Now, let's switch to Danielle Haley for our latest menu entrees. What would they be today, Danielle? Well, the first is the cheesy, cheesy shells with roll. The second were the bird nuggets, as Coco would say. They do come with their usual dipping sauces. Curly fries and applesauce round out the menu. And the coldest beverage... Why, female! And speaking of cool, let's talk birthdays. Where it has it, there's quite a few. That would be correct. Catherine and William Alexander in the second grade are celebrating today because they're both eight. And in the fourth grade... Be sure to wish Miss Hannah Tobin a happy birthday because she is 10 today. And finally, in the fifth grade, Megan Stout is 
also celebrating, and it's number 11 for her. Happy birthday to those four students. And as a reminder, after school sports is canceled. Oh! Michael Blabo is talking dinosaurs today. Seems they recently found a very distant relative of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And we mean way before the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 160 million years ago to be exact. It seems this recent discovery in China has uncovered an ancestor to the huge 42-foot Rex. The funny thing is that this dinosaur was much smaller, only 9 to 10 feet in length. The two old fossils had crests on their heads, which really surprised scientists. The dinosaur, which had razor-sharp teeth, was named Guanlong K, which is Chine in Chinese means crowned dinosaur of the five-colored rock. The five-colored rock refers to the layers where the dinosaur is found. And that's news from the science world. Thanks, Michael. I know that yesterday the U.S. had climbed to second in the medal count. How are things looking up today? John? Oh, I hope it's good news, Mr. Martin. I'm afraid the U.S. has slipped a third where it is tied with Norway and Canada. All three nations have 18 medals. Germany still keeps the top spot with its 22 medals. Austria is in second place with 19 medals. Sasha Cohen of the U.S. and Irene Slutskaya of... Slutskaya! Slutskaya. I'm a real figure skating uh, fanatic, you know. Of Russia, we'll skate tonight to see who takes the gold. Sasha is only ahead by three hundredths of, hundredths of a point. Yep, you heard that right. They are neck and neck. Sasha wants to win to keep the U.S. on the winner's podium for the fourth Olympics in a row. On the other hand, Irina wants to help Russia take home gold medals in all the major sk skating events this Olympics. Keep in mind, to that, Japan is in third place and could take over first or second if either Sasha or Irina makes a mistake. It ought to be... It ought to be a, a terrific finale in Nailbiter. Sadly, the U.S. hockey team was finished off by fin team of Finland. And that's the Olympic news. We are in for an exciting evening. Now, I don't know if the weather forecast is actually exciting, but here she is, Samantha Fisher. Ooh. I'll do my best, Coco. Hey, folks. There's going to be weather today. We've got some clouds, of course, because it's Pittsburgh. But that's not all. We have some snow flurries and wind later today. And you will get to experience a high of 44 and a low of 28. dun dun da Torino, Italy is going to have a high of 40, so those Olympic athletes are going to be just a bit colder. Finally, today's detention teachers are Miss McPherson and Mrs... We don't know Urbanic, the other one. Urbanic. Mrs. Urbanic. <laughs> How did I do? Well, you know, you tried, Miss Samantha, but you know what? Let's just face it. You just don't have the star quality that I do. You wish. Ah! We, we I don't need think to so. move I on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. We need right. to move on with the show. Now, today, we have students from Miss Subak's room, second classroom. This, these students have been recognized for being... Fantastic, magnificent readers. And we are going to recognize them right now. And guess what I brought for them today, Miss Renali? What? Wait till you see. They're little peeps. And look, I even put a worm in for them in case they got hungry. You know what I mean? All right. Well, our first reader with 35, 35 points is Angela D'Alessandro. Come on out, Angela. Here you go, Angela. Thank you, Coco. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, wait a minute. Turn around and say hi to everybody. Hi. Say hi, Mrs. Subak. Hi, Mrs. Subak. Yeah. All right, and next we have, oh, I like this name too, Zach Babbitt. Where is Zach? Hi, Coco. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Good. Weren't you on with me last year? Yeah, well, I look forward to seeing you. You want some birdies? Yes, please. Okay, hang on. I've got to go down and find them. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, here they are. Here you go. Can you go out? Yeah, here you are. Yummy. Yeah, yummy. That's right. OK, 
We want to know what Dormont Elementary's very favorite books are. Tomorrow we'll be sending slips to each homeroom. We'd like to hear the, what the best book is that you've ever read. The best book ever, huh? Mm -hmm. Or had read to you. Then we'll share the results by grades. So start thinking, and tomorrow you can make your vote count for best book ever. Best book ever! Do you know what you're going to pick yet, Miss Rinaldi? Yeah. You do? Uh -huh. Whisper it to me. Oh! Good choice. Very good choice. I don't want to give it away yet. We'll, we'll tell them tomorrow. All right, so be thinking about which is your very, 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 very favorite book. Miranda Snow out there with all those AR points. You better be thinking long and hard because you have a lot to choose from. All right. I think that wraps it up, huh? Mm -hmm. And remember, don't show up for afternoon sports because you'll be very lonely. There won't be anybody there. All right. This has been Miss Jamie Renault. Good morning, Dorman Elementary, and welcome to KOAM in the Morning, the top news show in Dormont, PA. Yeah, we know why that is, don't we? Because it's the only new show in Dormont? Oh, that's not it, Miss Smarty Pants. The real reason is moi. Remember, I have that star quality. So you keep reminding us. Well, if you can just get over yourself for one moment, we can get to the real reason we are here. Keeping our Dormont students informed. Oh, that's so true. For example, did you know that next Thursday is Dr. Seuss's birthday? <laughs> Dr. Seuss, oh yes, it's true. Soon it's candles and cake for you. We know you are no longer here. Still, we hold your books so dear. And would I like them with some jam? Yes, and with green eggs and ham. Next week, for sure, we'll celebrate. When it comes to authors, you're still first rate. Thanks for that po poetic dedication, Coco. I think on Monday we'll have some bookworms here from Mrs. McCoskey's class. Yep. They just keep reading and keep coming. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Speaking of which, we also have more news. Next Friday, there are two exciting events. First, the PFO assembly with Tim Hartman from the Children's Museum with Tales That Tell Why. Hmm. Like, like why Miss Samantha Fisher continues to torment me day in, day out. Uh, I cannot promise that one will be one of the tales, but it should be very entertaining anyway. Well, okay, you sold me on it. And later that night, it's movie night again. <laughs> I'm getting my jammies and sleeping bag all ready. With that reassuring thought, let's get to the menu with se menu selections with Dan D. Goddard. Coco, you <coughs> will be relieved to know that there's no chicken on the menu today. Whoo! Bless my gizzard! All right, go on, Danny! Entree A is the meatball hoogie. Entree B is the Italian dunkers. And the fruit and the veggie? I'm getting to it. The toss, it's the toss salad in pears. Oh, and we got milk. And, by the way, and I hope you can get a close-up of this, Miss Jessica. Hey, Ben, you're not the only star of the milk campaign. Yeah, here is moi. Posing with my own milk mustache. What do you think? Oh, yeah. What do you think, Miss Jessica? I like it. Uh, good grief. You have way too much time on your hands, or uh, I mean, wings. Yeah, well, you know, I think you might just be a wee bit jealous. All right. With that, let's go to Michael Pomato. Michael, I hear you and Coco have, some pol have a political message or invitation today. Is that correct? It is. You know, coming up in several months, is the next election in Pennsylvania for governor. We have our present governor, 
Ed Rendell, who will be seeking re-election. Governor Rendell is a Democrat, and he was the mayor of Philadelphia before he came governor. He was elected governor of our state back in 2002. Also running for governor is Republican candidate Lynn Swan. Mr. Swan was a Pittsburgh Steeler and played in four Super Bowls while he wore the black and gold. Since then, he has been a sports broadcaster for ABC. And he also serves as the chairman of the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Whoa! Nice summary, Mr. Pamibo. Thank you. Now here's the deal. We like for Dormont students to be informed citizens because, after all, one day they'll be voting too. So, I think it would be only fitting and right if, if Governor Rendell and Liz Swan came to Dormont Elementary and had an exclusive interview with the crowd. So, Governor Rendell and Mr. Swan, here's our personal invitation for you to appear on our show K-O-A-M in the morning and share your views. And by the way, I will definitely watch your position on gummy worms. Excuse me, do you really think that Lynn Swan and Governor Rendell have time to do an interview with you? Hey, now if I can get a couple of Steelers as well as Dave Littlefield of the Pirates to come here and do an interview with the bird. I just don't see why the governor and Mr. Swan wouldn't make the time to be here, too. I mean, they like kids, don't they? And, and they think education is important, right? All right, I have to say, you've got a point there. You heard it, Governor Rendell and Mr. Swan. Coco's waiting to hear from you. Who's next, Oprah? <laughs> How did you guess? A bird can dream. Absolutely true, Coco. Are there any birthdays before we move on to sports and weather? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we have a slew of them. Uh, that means a lot. First of all, happy birthday wishes are sent downstairs to Edwin No. In kindergarten, hey Edwin, we hear you're six. Way to go. Jack Walker in the third grade, he's turning nine today. And you can see Patricia Kelly becoming the big decade old today. Amy Adams, <coughs> hey, we just had her on the show the other day for her great reading and math work. She's eight tomorrow. She's celebrating the same day that Dante Barbetti in third grade turns nine. And finally, Jacob Leggy in the fourth grade is 10 on Sunday. It sounds like a lot of cake and ice cream to me. Feel free to bring me a piece on Monday. You have no pride. Hey, there is no harm in asking. And, and actually, folks, I like those corner pieces. You know, with the ones with all the frocks. I think I will take my leave. <sighs> Maybe Jamie can deal with you. She's so sensitive, you know? Coco, did you forget to tell the students that they can vote for their favorite books today and all next week? Whoops! Well, they can. Slips are being delivered to the, all the homerooms today. Students will have until next Friday to let us know what their favorite books are. All right, and all votes should be placed in the envelopes down by the office, correct? Right. Now, let's check in with John Morton for the latest Olympics coverage. Thanks, Jamie. Last da, da. Sorry. Thanks, Jamie. Last night, Sasha Cohen skated a silver medal for the United States. Irina Slutskaya took only bronze. The, the gold medal instead went to Japan's Shikusa Arakawa, who gave her country their first medal in, the, in the, this Olympics. Germany continues to lead with the medal count with 24 medals. The United States is in second spot with 20. Falling just behind with 19 are Aust Austria, Russia, and Canada. On Monday, I'll discuss some of the highlights in the first of the Olympics. And next week, 
I'll let you know just how good Jose Costello of the Pirates is with that glove. Back to you, Jamie and Coco. Thanks, John. We're wondering what the weekend will bring us in terms of weather. What about it, Sam? Oh, my! Here we go again! Today and the weekend, we'll have clouds, rain, and snow showers. Ha! Go figure! And the temps will be in the 30s and 40s. The good news is that spring is less than a month away. All right, now that is what I love to hear. And when spring is in the air, so is love. That's what they say, and it could happen, even for a bird like you. Huh. Thanks, Miss Fisher. I mean, we all need someone special. Even you. <sighs> Some days like this are just hard makes this just a hard job. Detention teachers today are Mrs. Holmes and Mr. Yunkin. At this point, I need to hand the mic over to Harrison Levecki. All right. Have a nice weekend, Miss Fisher. You too, Coco. Thank you. This week, I have an entertainment announcement for next Friday on our show. KOAM's next segment of Girls vs. Guys <laughs> will take place next Friday with none other than Mr. Shevchek and Mrs. Holmes. First grade teacher extraordinaire. Mr. Shevchek is sure that he'll win, but Mrs. Holmes has plans to prove him wrong. At stake, gummy worms, of course. Next week, let's see who we crown the winner. Girl, the girls or the guys? That's right! And you know what? I'm coming up with some really tough questions, Miss Rinaldi. But in the meantime, have a safe weekend. Say your pledge. And good morning. And good learning. Good morning, Dormont. It's Friday, February 17th. I am Jessica Turner, here with my co-anchor, Cook of the Crow. Hey, yeah, that's right. And I want to say right off the bat that there's absolutely no school on Monday, so be sure not to come. Stay home. Sleep in. Relax. And next Wednesday, February 22nd, is the 5th grade choral concert. Yep, that's right. And also, if any were absent for rip distribution day please make sure that you see mrs cortez downstairs also good luck to all those fifth graders who are finishing up the pssa today now yesterday we were all treated to an assembly where we got to meet john banizak and it was a terrific assembly and I also got to talk more to the Steeler afterwards. And we'll be seeing that tape directly after our morning show. Thanks, Coco. Danny, what will be our lunch fare for today? Jessica, choice A will be a chicken fajita, a distant relative of chicken patty, but choice B will feature the piece of supreme. The sides for either entree include golden corn and orange juice. Yeah, poor chicken fajita. And for a delicious beverage, we've got milk. Now, as for birthdays, we are going to celebrate these today. Oleg Choco! Hey! Happy birthday, Oleg! Oleg is 11, and so is fifth grader Matthew Dibbon. Happy birthday, Matthew! Now, celebrating on the 20th will be Jackie and Melissa McCarthy, those famous twins, and Luke Pearson. Happy birthday, guys. Now, I say we hear from Michael Pomibo, who's going to share some exciting scientific discoveries from a far, far away land. Take it away, Michael. It really is far away. In a very remote part of Indonesia, in a mountainous jungle, scientists have found what they describe as a lost world. Ooh. It's about the size of Rhode Island. 
and it contains dozens of never seen and rare plants, birds, butterflies, frogs, and mammals. One of the most interesting and exciting discoveries was that of the golden mantled tree kangaroo, since this mammal had been thought to be nearly extinct. Over 20 types of new frogs were found as well as four butterfly species and five types of palms and as one scientist reported we've only scratched the surface the scientists by the way come from indonesia australia and the united states back to you jamie thanks very much for that report michael john morton is going to continue his olympic coverage john what about it yeah i hope we're doing better in that medal cow what about it john jamie the united states had its share of disappointments and figures in the figure skating rink. While John Weir had been in second place, he finished down in fifth place. On a happier note, the U.S. hockey team rebounded nicely and won against the nation of Kaz Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan by a score of 4-1. to one. The medal count shows that Norway still leads with a total of 13 medals. Russia is <clears throat> also still maintains second place with its 11 medals. However, the United States has fallen to fourth with nine medals because Germany slipped into third with its 10 medals. That's Olympic highlights, Jamie and Coco. Elise and Harrison have a joint report today that was prepared by fourth grader, Stephen Yamalis. Today, Harrison and I are reporting on the book and movie, Curious George. Now, Coco, I know how you enjoy reading and are curious about learning new things, but there is one monkey that is just as curious as you are. Oh, that is hard to believe. Go ahead, though. His name is George, and Africa is his home. He never did anything wrong, and there was never a time when he did anything wrong. That's how the hilarious and clever story of Curious George begins. Just to be with the man in the yellow hat, he says goodbye to his home in the African jungle. A.J. Ray and Margaret Ray wrote this book in 1941. On February 10th, the new animated movie opened in theaters. Children throughout the world know about Curious George because the books have been translated into 14 different languages. In the movie, the voice of the man in the yellow hat is played by the hilarious actor Will Ferrell. Mr. Farrell recently told Weekly Reader, for years, Curious George has amused, entertained, and taught children all around the world. His adventures make us laugh, and we all depend on humor in life. You can look for Curious George at your local theater. Or at lo your school or local library. This has been Elise Santel and Harrison Levicki with both the Book Look and Entertainment this week. I think that means we're ready for Sam Fisher with the weather forecast. Great weather yesterday, Sam. Thanks. Yeah, now, as if she's personally responsible, come on, cut me a break. Well, it was a balmy day with pleasant temps, even if there was some rain. Today, however, we get back to the regular Febu February chill, <laughs> with a high of 44 and a low of just 21. And look for even colder weather this weekend. Yeah, see, I thought so. You know, I think I'll head down to Florida for a spell. Promises, promises. <laughs> and today's detention teachers are Mrs. Palmieri and Mrs. Falgren. All right. Now, on Monday, it seems that Mrs. D. Oh, excuse me, we're not going to be here on Monday. On Tuesday, it seems Mrs. D. Martino in the fifth grade is not happy that the last time Mr. Shevchek presented his question that they lost because Mrs. Palmieri's class knew the answer thanks to their ace student teacher. So there is going to be a match on Tuesday between these two girls versus the guys. Should be exciting. And now we'd like you to stay tuned to see the interview with Coco Moi and John Banizak. And everybody have a great
learning